Good morning and welcome to Algoma Steel. I'm Brenda Stanta, Manager of Communications and Branding here at Algoma. And on behalf of our Chief Executive Officer, Mike McQuaid, and the entire Algoma team, I wish to extend a warm welcome to our honored guests, Premier Ford, Minister Romano, Minister Rickford, Mayor Provenzano, and to all of you who have gathered with us here today. It is a great honor to host you for a very special announcement. Before we get too far along, I do want to review our safety protocol. In the event of an emergency, you will be asked to exit through door 14, which is the door that you entered, and you will be marshaled to a safe location. In the event that that exit is not available, instructions will be provided. Please join me in acknowledging that we are in Robinson here on treaty territory and the land on which we are gathered is traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg, specifically the Garden River and Batchewana First Nations, as well as Métis people. The facility in which you find yourself is unique in Canada and what we consider Algoma's cornerstone asset, our direct strip production complex. Here in this twin strand continuous casting hot strip mill, we convert liquid steel to a hot roll coil in about 30 minutes, using 60% less energy than the conventional process. The coils you see here are used across North America in a wide range of applications in automotive, energy, construction, pipe and tube, and manufacturing sectors. When we pair this process with liquid steel from our new electric arc furnaces, and low carbon electricity from Ontario's power grid, some of North America's greenest steel will be made right here in this facility. To get things started, I call upon our Member of Provincial Parliament and Minister of Government and Consumer Services, the Honourable Ross Romano. Ross, please come up. I mentioned to you, Premier, I actually prepared written remarks, and Greg and uh, many of you have already heard some of these comments before, uh, but it was very important to me uh, to be able to say some words uh, really uh, that resonate a lot from my heart. Um, I want to thank you all who have joined us here today, and for those of you who are watching at home, today is an incredibly special day for me and for my community. I want to recognize my mom, Lena, and my dad, Tony, who have joined us here today. Uh, this is the first announcement that they have ever been a part of, and I felt it was the most important one that they should be a part of. And I'm so honored to be able to share this announcement with you both. I don't think this could have ever been possible without you. In 1973, my father did immigrate here from Italy. He didn't start working at Algoma Steel until 1978. He joined my, my uncles, my Zio Alfredo and Zio Pepe, and my grandfather, my nonno Frank at that time. Algoma Steel employed nearly 12,000 people then. It was the largest employer in all of Northern Ontario. If you lived in and around Sault Ste. Marie at that time, you were either working at Algoma or you knew someone who worked at Algoma Steel or were related to someone from Algoma Steel. And back, thing, back then, things were very good for Algoma Steel. And they were good for the North. Because like in so many other Northern communities, the health of your largest employer is directly related to the health of your economy. And a healthy economy leads to a healthy community. And the Northern Ontario economy was in fact booming, whether it was natural resource development, mining, forestry, or steel manufacturing, but things changed. By the time I started my first year of high school in 1993, Algoma Steel was going through its first bankruptcy restructuring proceeding. It would be the first of three such proceedings in as many decades. Things in Sault Ste. Marie and across all of Northern Ontario had taken a serious decline. I was about 13 years old at that time, and I remember that I was sitting at my dinner table with my uncles or my dad or my nonno. The dinner conversations were upsetting and unsettling when we talked about the state of our community. Things were so tough for so many families. Kids across all of this city were speaking about those tough times at their dinner tables too. And over the next three decades, Sault Ste. Marie and Northern Ontario saw a tremendous outmigration of our youth kids did not think there were opportunities left for them and they started to leave. They still felt great pride in their communities but they felt great despair. And as the health of our local economies in the north deteriorated, so too did the health of our communities. 
the effect in some ways or some of, the, some of which are, are the worst today. 1993 was a very significant year for me. I believed in my heart that one day I would find a way to be a part of a solution, not only for our community of Sault Ste. Marie, but for all of Northern Ontario and the whole province. Some 30 plus years later, when we formed government in 2018, Algoma Steel was three years into a bankruptcy restructuring. I realized then uh, this was our opportunity to be the part of a solution that my 13-year-old self had been thinking of 25 years before. Because at that point, I had three of my own little children, and I didn't want them growing up with the same kind of despair that so many of us lived with decades earlier. I wanted to show them they didn't have to leave their families and their homes behind. I wanted people across all of Northern Ontario to know that their home communities were in fact places that they could live in, work in, and raise their families in. And within the first year of being elected under the leadership of Premier Doug Ford and Minister Greg Rickford, we found a way to protect the pensions of nearly 9,000 retired steelworkers and nearly 3,000 active steelworkers, and we saved Algoma Steel from the black cloud of CCA that for three years prior, no one else could bring to an end. But we got it done, and our Premier was here fighting for us then, like he is here fighting for us today. Thank you. But we're not talking about CCAA anymore in Sault Ste. Marie. In fact, today is about talking about how Algoma Steel will never again be under the black cloud that we were then. Today is about the future of Algoma Steel. It's about the future of Sault Ste. Marie and all of Northern Ontario, because today's announcement ensures that Algoma Steel, which has been our largest employer for several generations and supported thousands of workers and their families throughout all of that time, will continue to be here for several generations more. This demonstrates that Algoma Steel is healthy again. This demonstrates that our economy can become healthy again. And as our economy in Sault Ste. Marie and through all of Northern Ontario becomes healthy again, so can our communities begin to become healthy again. It is now my pleasure and my honour to introduce you to our Premier, Doug Ford, who has been an incredible mentor to me and an absolute champion for our community, our region and our province. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, good morning, everyone. And, and thank you, Minister Romano, for the introduction and all the work you do for the people here in Sault Ste. Marie. And I was just telling the, the men and women here, you do an incredible job representing them at the cabinet, at the caucus, and, and you're just constantly on the whole cabinet about making sure the, the Sioux uh, prospers. And I want to welcome Mayor Provenzano, who is joining us today. Speaking on behalf of Ministers Romano and Rickford, let me say how pleased we are to be back here in the Sioux, surrounded by the incredible team at Algoma Steel. Friends, our government has a plan for growing a stronger economy, an economy that works for everyone. It's a plan that's training more people for careers in skilled trades. It's a plan that's attracting investment to create good jobs in our auto and manufacturing sectors. It's a plan that's connecting resources, industries, and workers in Northern Ontario to the future of clean steel and electric vehicles. And it's a plan that's building roads, bridges, and highways, expanding subways and public transit, and constructing more homes, all for a growing province. And Northern Ontario is at the forefront of this plan. Right now, global businesses are searching for materials, expertise, and human resources needed to build technologies of the future. They're looking for the best jurisdiction anywhere to invest, create jobs, and do business. I'm here to say once again, look no further. Because Northern Ontario is blessed with tremendous natural resources in major mining, forestry, and manufacturing industries. These sectors are crucial to building Ontario, with steel, lumber, and billions of dollars of mineral deposits available to us. And these resources will be even more vital as demand increases for critical minerals for the batteries that drive electric vehicles. Vehicles which will be made from start to finish right here in Ontario by Ontario workers. Yesterday, Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland tabled the federal government's latest budget, which included billions in funding 
for critical minerals. I couldn't be more thrilled that Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister are joining us in our ongoing work to unlock full economic potential of Northern Ontario's mines and minerals. As we invest leading the electric vehicle and EV battery revolution, but the fact is, these are energy intensive industries that need stable electricity costs to succeed. When we took office four years ago, energy costs were skyrocketing and totally unpredictable. The only thing businesses could be sure of was that these costs would continue to go up. And as a result, they looked elsewhere to invest. The previous government's policies chased businesses and good jobs right out of this province, leaving entire communities reeling as families saw their economic opportunities disappear. Well, my friends, those days are over, they're done, they're gone, because our government knows that Ontario has everything it needs to succeed, every possible advantage to be the number one jurisdiction anywhere in the world to do business. All that government needs to do is create the conditions and the environment for Ontario to be unstoppable. And that's why we're here today and continuing to expand our support for Northern industry. Our government is increasing our investment in the Northern Energy Advantage program from $120 million a year to over $176 million by 2025. The expanded Northern Energy Advantage program will allow more companies to qualify and control their energy costs so they can stay globally competitive and invest in creating good, long-term jobs for the people of Northern Ontario. Algoma Steel is the first company to join in the new program, Investor Stream. With certainty provided about their energy cost, Algoma is now investing in a new electric arc furnace here in Sault Ste. Marie. A good one. They're positioning themselves as a global leaders in clean steel. And while we are so proud to have Algoma be the first to invest, we know that many companies will follow suit. This includes companies who are already here in Ontario and others who will be drawn here by the exceptional opportunities that Ontario has to offer. With investments like these, we are building integrated supply chains from Northern Ontario to Southern Ontario, connecting natural resources in the North to customers and industries in Southern Ontario and around the world. This program is more proof of our government's commitment to support our forestry, mining and manufacturing sectors. And our mission is to keep bringing good jobs and new opportunities to hardworking people and families of Northern Ontario. Friends, in four short years, our province has come so far together. Let's keep building and let's say yes to investing in the North. Let's say yes to unleashing the Northern Ontario's economic potential. Friends, let's get it done. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll pass it over to Algoma's President and CEO, Michael McQuaid. First of all, thank you, Premier Ford, Minister Romano, Minister Rickford, for coming to Algoma Steel to host today's announcement. Your continued support for Algoma and our vision for green steel and sustainability in our business, along with your continued commitment to our community and Northern Ontario is very much appreciated. I'm pleased to be here to recognize the importance of the evolution of what is now the Northern Energy Advantage Program. Just over three years ago, Algoma Steel emerged from creditor protection and embarked on a transformation journey, setting out on a path to evolve our business toward greater sustainability. The expansion and enhancements made to this program provide companies in Northern Ontario the clarity and certainty needed to undertake such transformation. The province's commitment to supporting industrial electricity 
customers through the Northern Industrial Electricity Rebate Program was key in our decision to pursue electric arc steelmaking. The evolution in this program, as announced today, further demonstrates the government is committed to the region and reinforces Algoma's $700 million investment in Sault Ste. Marie. In fact, the continuation and expansion of the Northern Energy Advantage Program marks an essential milestone in how we will manufacture steel and achieve greater sustainability. Moving to this proven low-carbon manufacturing process will significantly reduce Algoma's environmental footprint and cut our greenhouse gas emissions by 70%, or 3 million tons of CO2, the equivalent of taking 1 million cars off the road. That's an incredible achievement. Furthermore, when combined with Ontario's clean energy grid, which remains one of the lowest carbon power supplies across our continent, Algoma will become one of the leading producers of green steel in North America. As a producer of green steel, we believe we will help our customers achieve their own sustainability goals. Whether it be for the new infrastructure or electric cars, steel is an integral part of every carbon reduction solution. We can't get to net zero without steel, and we commend the province for its leadership and support for such long-term business investments that will move us toward net zero. And making this investment benefits not only our own business and the broader environment, but also extends benefits into our supply chain, our community, the Northern Ontario region, and in fact across Ontario and Canada. The conversion to electric arc furnaces ensures Algoma can sustain advanced manufacturing in our community, bringing with it high quality jobs, including the creation of approximately 500 new construction jobs, as well as more skills development and training opportunities and growth in supply chain benefits and our local economy for years to come. This transformation involves Algoma building and partnering in the development of supporting infrastructure and we will continue to work with the province to bring these assets to fruition. The support of the Government of Ontario through this program and ongoing collaboration will play an important role in enabling us to modernize steelmaking and create a secure, stable future in Sault Ste. Marie. Today's announcement is further demonstration of the Government of Ontario's commitment to business to Northern Ontario, and we at Algoma again thank Ontario and the Ford government for their support and leadership on the path to net zero. We'll now take questions from the media. If you have a question, please join the line behind me at the microphone. We'll go one at a time. One question, one follow-up per reporter. Good morning, Premier. Good morning. So what is the province going to do to get power to Sault Ste. Marie? As it stands right now, the infrastructure isn't able to support places like Algoma, Arco, Tenaris, Helena, etc. What are we going to do to avoid brownouts in our community, knowing that all this is coming here? Well, before I send it over to Minister Rickford, what, what I can say, what we're doing for the future too, is leading the world in SMR, small modular reactors, that will be able to help people in the north, not only here, but in the further northern mining towns and, and we're blazing a new trail worldwide when it comes to SMRs, but uh, Minister Rickford? Well, thank you, Premier. And just before I get to your question, I want to, how about them Algoma steel workers, hey? It's, uh, Premier, I, I, you know, I, I grew up, uh, I'm a foundry brat. Uh, my first full-time job was, uh, was working in a foundry and, and working with my dad, uh, at different mills. So it's just great to be back here. Thank you, Michael and Brenda. Look, there's no question that the, a commitment to our uh, infrastructure at the level of uh, our grid network across Northern Ontario is, is under uh, a constant rebuild. Um, we work very closely with our Crown Corporations and the private sector. Next week, we'll be cutting the ribbon on the east-west tie. These are significant corridors uh, for the electrification because we see the opportunity. And we know that as we pivot to an electric art furnish, uh, furnace uh, capacity here 
And as we incentivize, like we never have before, through the rebranded Northern Energy Advantage program, uh, that we need that infrastructure to support it. It's already well underway. That's why out at Borden, they've been able to pivot to a 100% electrification for their mining operations. We're getting ready to process some of our critical minerals, like over in Cobalt, so we know the infrastructure that's required to support it. And that's why we're working closely with our partners to ensure that we have the infrastructure in the grid uh, to supply that electricity. And is the province working to get the transportation network in Northern Ontario able to get the stuff out of here once it's produced? Absolutely. I mean, the, the corridor capacity, we have a couple more announcements in the coming weeks, and I don't want to upstage those. But I can guarantee you, we've taken everything is on the table from twinning of the highway uh, to two plus one lanes. Uh, to railroad corridors. Uh, uh, we're moving forward on plans to ensure that the products that we produce here in Northern Ontario can be shipped out to the world. Because here's what we know, especially in the context of uh, uh, global strife uh, in Ukraine, the world has come to Northern Ontario's doorstep. It's asking for our forest products. It's asking for our steel products. And it's asking for our critical minerals. We don't want to just extract these materials from exploration to the electric vehicle and from finished products through our forest sector we're ready to move this product out for a world that's asking for it we're ready okay. good morning uh first question here would be algoma steel is the first company to take advantage of the new expanded program have there been any other companies that have already expressed interest across the north at a for this or have there been companies that have been approved in, for any capacity not not, not uh, across the north there's there's one other uh, company that's that's doing it as well I'll hold off on on their name but um, you know what I'm proud of I'm, I'm proud of the women and men and I I gotta tell the, the the folks here a story when I was just elected there was 9,000 pensioners at risk of losing their pension it was insolvent that's no fault of their own because the previous government didn't give two hoots about that. We stepped up, put $60 million to make sure it was solvent, saved the 9,000 pensioners, and, and thank God we did it. And since we did that, I want to thank the folks from Algoma investing $700 million into this facility, into this community. And that's three and a half times for every one job they get Algoma, there's spin-off jobs of three and a half, well over 10,000 people. And that's what we need to do. We're always going to protect the people here in the Sioux and in the North, and we'll always have their backs. Under the previous program, version of the program, there was a $20 million cap. Has that been replaced by the new dollar figure, or is this an unlimited amount of funding that they can access? Well, I'm going to have to pass that over to Ross or, or Minister Rickford, either one. Yeah, look, there's a couple key features to this. The first one, obviously, is the new investor class. And, and Algoma is our first entrant. But it, as I said earlier, it's pre-positioning us for uh, increasing our capacity, our ability, ultimately, uh, to process critical minerals right here in Northern Ontario. The second key component that your question alludes to uh, is to take the cap off the $20 million. So for the existing uh, existing participants, that cap will no longer be there. We believe that this will be a tremendous incentive, especially for mining operations and existing forestry operations, to ramp up their production uh, and not, uh, uh, not be faced with increased electricity uh, costs once they hit that threshold. Premier Ford, good morning. Good you morning. mentioned uh, the federal budget, Minister Freeland, with the critical mineral strategy. Yep. Uh, Wailu Metals taking over ownership of Norant. Is your government in any type of communication with Wailu to see if they're still interested in building a ferrocrum smelter here in Sault Ste. Marie? Well, uh, I, I, I can't say that we're in, in full discussions, but what I will tell you, we're going to build, uh, we're going to put $1 billion to build that road and hopefully the, the federal government, uh, out of the $1.5 of infrastructure, will get 40% of that. That's going to go up to build that road. Now, just keep in mind, uh, up in the ring of fire, as it grows, and the billions and bill hundreds of billions of dollars, um, uh, the minerals up there, right now, we're flying in diesel. That's unbelievable. We're flying in food and fruit. This is going to change the community. It's going to change people's lives. Once we build that road, we'll be able to supply it by, via road 
uh, the fuel and the diesel. We're going to supply food, critical uh, areas, just, just to be able to live. So we're going to make sure, I said it when I got elected, with the support, I'm going to emphasize this, with the support of the First Nations community, we're going to both hop on that bulldozer and build that road as sure as I'm standing here. Thank you, Premier. My second question is for Mr. McQuaid. Yeah. Mr. McQuaid, could you give some more information uh, how much money will um, the steel plant will receive through this funding announcement today? How it's going to help the steel plant? So the benefit is, uh, as I said in my prepared remarks, the $700 million investment was, was justified with the, the Northern Industrial Energy Rebate Program. The fact that we now have an enhanced Northern Energy Advantage Program just further substantiates and, and supports the fact that we'll be making steel here in Sault Ste. Marie for generations to come. Thank you. That's all the questions today. Women and men here at Algoma, uh, salt of the earth. These are the people I love. These are the people I fight for. And I got to tell you, Ross Romano is one of the best representatives you're ever going to have. He's an absolute champion. We'll always have your back. Can't wait to come up, uh, come back to the Sioux with, with another great announcement. Stay tuned. It's coming soon to employ more people in the Sioux. And one of my proudest moments, they gave me a Greyhound jersey. So I'm coming to the, the uh, watch the Greyhounds kick some butt up here. Anyways, thanks and God bless everyone. Folks, that concludes our formal remarks. We're just going to do a quick photo. And thank you very much for coming to visit Algoma Steel today.